You're welcome to the house of the Lord on this beautiful Lord's Day. May the Lord bless all of you for coming. Yes. And it is the prayer of our heart that that joy unspeakable, which is available only through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, will be the portion of everyone present here this morning. Yes. Of course, before that joy unspeakable, beautifully sung by the quartet, we have the orchestra playing for us, Almighty God, and then the choir, the song Mansion Over the Hilltop, to which all of us are aspiring, and which we know one of these days by His grace, we shall join those who have gone on before. A similar warm welcome is extended to our internet audience. May the Lord bless you wherever you are. If you live locally, we shall be glad to have you in our midst. We are the Apostolic Faith. We are located on number 95 Fenham Road. We have our Sunday school at 9.30 devotional service, just as we are doing now at 11. You've just only missed that uh, aspect of the prelude that I read out. We are still um, in the service proper. If you can join us, you are very welcome to do so. But if not, you can as well just join us in singing together wherever you are and enjoy the service with us. We will continue the service by singing a song that is not in our regular hymn book, The Love of God. Amen. We will sing the four verses of that song. Let's ponder on the words of that song. The orchestra will join us in singing, and then we have some other songs that we're going to use to join that, at the end of which we shall have congregational prayer. But for now, we have Brother Delight will come forward to lead us in congregational singing.
from Sacred Songs and Solos, uh, hymn number 659, 659, and we'll take the first, the second, and the fourth verse while seated. 659. I will love thee in life, I will love thee in death, Amen. and praise thee as long as thou lendest me breath. And say when the death July is called on my brow, if ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. Amen. May that be our prayer this morning. Amen. Amen. and the last verse. Love divine or love excelling. song before prayer will be 632 again in uh, SS and uh, 632 we'll take the first uh, verse and the second verse while seated and then we'll rise up to sing the fourth verse for those of us that can stand and remain standing to be led in prayer so the first the second verse while seated 
and we'll sing the fourth verse uh, uh, while standing and remain standing to be led in prayer. I just love this third verse. It says, uh, let sorrow do its work. Mm -hmm. Send grief and pain. Mm -hmm. Sweet are thy messengers. Amen. Sweet they are refrain. Yes. When they can sing with me, Amen. more love, O oh Christ, to thee. Amen. More love to thee. standing, we call on Brother Felix to lead us in congregation and prayer. God the Father, Amen. God the Son, and God Amen. the Holy Spirit, we stand before you in thy sanctuary, feeling the love that you gave to the world. Thank you, Jesus. You so love the world that you gave your only begotten Son, All right. that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Father, we thank you. Thank you we thank you for the salvation. Amen. Father, we thank you for the healing. Amen. Father, we thank you for casting death Amen. and giving us life in Christ Amen. Jesus. As we come before you with our little ones, we have not come to declare our righteousness. No. For seeing that our righteousness, Lord, is like filthy rags before you. We come before you, Father, this morning, looking up unto you in Jesus, that whosoever shall believe in you this morning shall have everlasting life. Amen. We pray, my Father, this morning that you will heal, Amen. that you will save, Amen. that you sanctify, Amen. and that, Lord, you will baptize with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you. Amen. For, Lord, you said in your Father there are many houses. There are many mansions, yeah. and God, we know that little mansion upstairs is what we all desire. Yeah. May you give us the wisdom this morning, Father, Amen. that we come before you with heart that desire, Lord, to be instructed by your word. Amen. Teach us to love this morning, Amen. for you are love. Amen. Teach us, O oh God of grace, to love this morning, Amen. because you are love. Yes. Yes. For we know in love you heal. Mm -hmm. For we know in love you spare. Yes. This morning, my Father, my God, 
Let the word, oh Father, be for the little ones. Amen. Let the word be for the young people. Amen. Let the word, my Father, be for the elderly. Amen. Father, we pray that, Lord, yes, when the word cometh, yes. stand with your servant. Amen. May we hear you speak. Amen. May our hearts, Father, be willing to be corrected. Amen. May our hearts be willing, Father, to be guided. Amen. For, Lord, all this we accept and we look up to you. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, from verse 4. 1 Corinthians 13th chapter, from the fourth verse. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, beareth all things, Believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Verse 8. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then 
that which is in part shall be done away. 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now, we see through a glass darkly. But then, face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. 13 and the last. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Turn to the same Bible text. In 1 Corinthians, we have read from verse 4 through to 13. I would like to join the first three verses to um, those verses that we have read together. So 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, reading from verse 1 through to the third verse. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy 
and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and know and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. If we want to do a kind of um, quick research of um, everyone present here this morning to ask the question, what is the greatest thing on earth? Maybe before we read this passage together, and we just want to say, let's take um, account of what people will say is the greatest thing here on earth. It is possible that we're going to hear people saying wealth, faith, fame, gifts of tongues, and other uh, uh, things in life, achievements. We are going to get diverse answers. And those answers will be based on our experiences. But we are not going to do that this morning. We are going to look into the Bible. What does the Bible say is the greatest thing on earth? The greatest thing on earth is the love of God. Yes. If something is suggesting to you here this morning, or those of you listening to me on our webcast, that God doesn't love you, that is coming from the pit of hell. Yes. I want to tell you this morning that God loves you. Yes. It has been a time when people are talking about love, love, love. Whether they know what it means or not. Whether they understand it or not. And perhaps with all this love, love, love song that is going around and statement. It is possible that no one has even said to you, I love you. But I want to assure you today that Jesus is saying to you, I love you. Amen. God loves you. Amen. The fact that you are seated even right now is that language of God saying, I love you. We often have this many times in all our conferences that um, husbands don't need to wait until they are talking of celebration of love before you say you love your wife. And the wife shouldn't wait either. It should be something that we say every time. But if you are missing on that, for whatever reason that I cannot explain, I want you to hear the voice of God today saying, I love you. Amen. You know that is the real love. Yes. It is the love that endures. Yes. It is the love that has no boundary. Yes. You know, in the world, we, we, there's something about um, reciprocity in terms of you do this to me, I do this to you. God's love is not like that. Yes. God's love has got nothing to do with who you are. He loves children. Yes. He loves young people. Yes. He loves adults. Yes. He loves everybody. Yes. For human beings, we can have different reasons why well, we don't like to use the word hate. There are some we be love. You love some people more. You love some less. Thanks be to God. Amen. He loves you as he loves me. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. God loves you. Amen. And I just want you to get that clear. And this love is a real one. Amen. It's not the one, well, honestly, there's nothing wrong in getting roses. I didn't get one for my wife. I bought a card. And I don't know what you have done. 
to say something to your own wife or your husband, whichever way you want to express that, but the real love comes from heaven. Amen. The true love comes from God. Amen. Things within the context of what we describe as love, even these days, can get sour. But the one with God, even in our sins, isn't that wonderful? The way we want to show love today is to look at when somebody is doing something we like, we appreciate, we, we, we enjoy, and it's everything going on fine, then love is easy, isn't it? You do something else now. That love will turn to something else. But with God, love is love. And it is real. And it is important that you and I know that God loves us. And we just want to appreciate him for that. If you imagine that thing that is greater than faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith is a great thing. There is no limit to what faith can do. Faith can move mountains. And it has been said that faith and prayer can get anything, anything from God. And yet, as big as faith is, there is still something greater than faith. Imagine that thing that is greater than hope. We are told that hope is an anchor of the soul, sure and steadfast, maketh not ashamed, yet there is something greater than hope. Verse 13 of our text says, And now abided faith, hope, and charity, which means love. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. The greatest of these is love. I think that is something worth examining. That is something worth uh, 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 striving to have. That is something worth worth. I want to understand it. Whatever it costs, I want to pay for it. I want to make the sacrifice for it. The love of God imparted into the human's heart. Just as we had in the prayer that was offered, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That if you and I would believe on him, we will not perish. In the name of Jesus, we will have everlasting life. That is love in action. Even when husband and wife say, I love you, I love you. I think I had it in the, um, the Sunday school this morning. No, no action. Follow some things. It's of no use. You want it to be back up with something, with, with action. This is love in action. God saying, I love you and I want you to know that I love you. And this is what I'm going to do to really show you that I love you. It's a popular verse of the scripture. So that love is boundless. He gave his only begotten son. Young people will agree with me that if you can convince a man that you love that man, you have won the heart of that man. Many of us entered, uh, many of us had this problem some years back. I remember very well I was still uh, uh, teaching. When you open your computer, just one day like that, and there was this um, email that says, I love you. And you just need to click on it. They call it, I love you, bug. And then before you know it, many people are, were, were trapped in one way or another before the information went around to say that, don't click on it. Once you click on it, uh, you're, you're, you, you are just um, inviting one virus or the other. But the, 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 what was so inviting was the love language that made people, if you see somebody saying, open this, I hate you, immediately you put on your delete button. <laughs> but something saying to you, I love you, ah, what, what, who is this? I want to know, what was he trying to say? What was he trying to give me? Where is this coming from? More especially for young people. 
If I see something like that on my computer and Stella is not written on it, I will think twice. But for young people, you may not need to think of anybody because you're already like, love is um, something else to you, isn't it? Love is very strong. And more especially when we talk about real love from the heart of God to man. May you experience that love today. Amen. If, you are, if you are yet to do so. God loves sinners. We need to understand that. It's their sins that he hates. After all, he said, God commendeth. He shows clearly. That's what that means. God shows clearly his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Jesus did not die for us after we were saved. While we were yet sinners, what a love is that? Christ died for us. Uh, uh, John, the disciple that wrote a lot about love, put it succinctly in 1 John 4.10 when he says, Aaron is love. I love that. It simply means this is true love. This is real love. Aaron is love. Not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be a sacrifice for our sins. The love of God. Is that not what we sang about? Is greater far than tongue or pain can ever tell. If the water in the ocean can turn to ink, and you have pen to be dipping there and be writing, the ocean will dry, and yet you have not been able to write even just a little percentage of the love of God. The love of God is great. We don't want to just shun that love. We want to embrace it. We want to have it. We want to experience it. Generally, as I mentioned before, human beings, they don't love this way. It's not the way human beings love. Some actions will bring about love, but God's love is not so. He loves first. And God himself is love. Yes. I call my wife love. She may call me love too and have some other nickname for me. But you know what? The real love, the true love, is God himself. God is love. That is his real name. The love of God. Have you experienced it? Has it really got into your soul? And knowing that you can say that to your peers, to your uh, uh, um, other people, to your family members, to anybody, that God loves me. We are guilty many times for not saying that to God himself. You know God likes to hear that? I love you, God. He loves to hear that. God is love. His love passes all knowledge. That love cannot fail. Amen. He says something in the book of Isaiah, chapter 49, about uh, uh, how the love or the care of a mother for a child can even fail at times. But for his own love, And wow, if you want to even know God's love, it has been said that you need to go to Calvary. Amen. Go to Calvary. John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Greater love has no man than this. What a good time. As people talk about love these days, this past week, just celebrating love in whichever way they believe they want to celebrate it. But we want to share the love of God. We want to experience the love of God because God is love. If people don't know what that means, we want to live a life characterized by the true love of God. We want people to see that love of God manifested in our lives. And God is ready to do that. 
if we look at a demonstration of that love, beautifully portrayed in the book of Ezekiel, the 16th chapter. The book of Ezekiel, the 16th chapter, we have there God's love demonstrated by a wretched infant, demonstrated in a situation where you have an abandoned newborn child, unwashed, unsanitary, exposed to all dangers and elements to die. But then the love of God appeared Amen. and the love lifted him up. Amen. Let's read that together. Beautiful, very beautiful. For those who have experienced this love, they will uh, uh, identify themselves with this passage of the scripture. It says, again, from verse 1, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know uh, abomination, and say, Thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother an Hittite. And as for thy nativity, in the day thou was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to support thee, thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. Verse 5, none I pitied thee to do any of this unto thee, to have compassion upon thee, but thou was cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. People that have had babies, God has blessed them with babies, perhaps they can continue to think about this. And I've, I've read things like this too in the past where a newborn baby just in an open field, just left there like that. For what purpose? To die. And that was the situation I was in. That was the situation many of us who have been washed here, we were in. Now verse 6 says, And when I pass by thee, May he pass by us today. Amen. When I pass by thee and saw thee polluted in thy own blood, I said unto thee, When thou wast in thy blood, live. Amen. Yea, I say unto thee, When thou wast in thy blood, live. Amen. I have caused thee to multiply as the bird of the field, and thou hast increased and waxing great, and thou hast come to excellent ornament. Thy breasts are fashioned and thine hair is grown, whereas thou wast naked and bare. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee. Amen. God can just not pass by like that. Amen. He has to look upon you. Amen. And may he look upon us this morning. Amen. Behold, thy time was the time of love. Amen. The time of love. Are you looking for the time of love? I'm talking of real love. There might have been some disappointments this February, maybe for some people, but I can tell you God will not disappoint you. Amen. This is a good time of love. Amen. When we are hearing it, it's the best time for it. Amen. So Lord, this is the time of love. Yes. I love you, Lord. Amen. And I know you love me too. Amen. Let that love be manifested in my life that love of the gift of your only begotten son to come into the world and to take my sins away, let me experience that love now. Amen. This is the time of love. Amen. Thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt up over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou be he missed mine. Amen. The love of God will cause us to be gods. It will cause us to be God's children. The love of God, if we will accept it, and we should do like this uh, 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 kind of graphic painted air of a baby. That baby that was just thrown somewhere to die and just to bleed and nothing to cover that, that child. Uh, when now someone passed by and carried that baby, it's a baby. That baby will surrender. 
Perhaps even that baby is just crying. And then somebody passed by and just carried the baby. The baby, we, I mean, the baby is a baby. How if we do like that to God right now? In our situation, even in our sins. I'm a baby, Lord. I, I don't want to struggle with you. I know you are, you are here to, to just make my life beautiful. You are here to take me out of this, my rubbish, where the enemy of my soul has cast me. Let today be the, the time of that love revealed in my life. The Lord will do that. Yeah. Verse 9 says, Then washed I thee with water, and I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. I clothed thee also with broidered work, and showed thee with badger skin, and I gathered thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands, and a chain on thy neck, and I put a jewel on thy forehead, and earrings in thy ears, and a beautiful crown upon thy head. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk, and broidered work, Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou was exceeding beautiful. Amen. And thou didst prosper into a kingdom. Amen. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty, for it was perfect through my comeliness, which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. Amen. God can make your life beautiful. And it is not because you've done anything. It's not because you are so good. It's not because you are so nice. It's not, it's not because you are so generous. It's all just because of his love. Hundred percent. As a result of his love. And I'm wondering. As people are talking about love. If you have ever thought about this particular one. Because it is the only real love. Yes. Love in action. That God is ready to bestow. I didn't give, um, I was, I did mention that um, Stella and I, we exchanged cards. And that was all, to some extent. You give me, I give you. But for God, I didn't give him anything. When he did this to my life, I can identify my life with this passage that we have read. I was a terrible man. Young man. A teenager. Terrible. Name all those things that young people of these days do. I was in all that. I was like a baby that was just thrown away. I've said this many times. I was born into a poor family. My family was rich when I was a baby, apparently. Then as I grew up, that, that richness has taken wings and has flown away. To the extent that they could not send me to secondary school. After primary school in my country, where I came from, you go to secondary school. They could not afford it. So there is one in between primary and secondary called modern school. That's where I went. And I know how many times they would send me out for six pounds school fees per term. And I know how many times I will walk on barefoot on about four or five miles from home to school, to and fro, without any slippers or anything. And I know how I got admission into secondary school, but son, we cannot afford it. You cannot just be like other young people in our compound. And I know how they called me one day and they said to me, what would you like to become? I remember that very well. And because my dad had a friend, a clergy in their church that always wear those beautiful robes and that collar and everything, I told dad, I want to be a, I want to be a pastor, a reverend. We call that man reverend. Amen. Daddy said, that's not what I'm asking. 
Now that you cannot go to secondary school, I'm saying, what would you like to learn as a trade? That's how I found myself in trade center to go and learn plumbing. And I, I, I finished very well as a plumber. And I can still do some plumbing work. That's all I was meant to become. But in that trade center, in that trade center, that was the time of my love. God passed by and is like, I can't just leave this man like this. I will have mercy upon him. It's like he's abandoned. Because even in that place that I went, they would send me home so many times. Not only me, many of us, when we couldn't afford our school fees. But Jesus Christ came down from heaven. He beautified my life Amen. with salvation from above, Amen. with experience of sins forgiven. Amen. It was on a Sunday afternoon like this I heard the word of God. And I decided, this experience of love of God in their heart, I must have it. God must give it to me. It's for everybody. So that's why at times in a meeting like this, uh, you don't know what is going on in the heart of people. In my heart, I was determining, today is going to be the day. Amen. Because it is the time of my love. Amen. We finished that meeting. We cleared up in the, in the dining hall. And I was one of the officers with my name, the son of, Je the son of Jesus. And that was my nickname, a sinner son of Jesus. Then I decided I'm going to pray. Alone, I went to the back of one of the classrooms. And I knelt down there that evening, Amen. December 1, Amen. 1974. Amen. It's on a Sunday night. Amen. I knelt down there Amen. and I confessed my sins to God. Amen. It's like that baby saying, uh, you know baby, how do they cry? They cry anyway. You know the way they cry. It's like God from heaven heard my cry. Amen. And said, I will not pass by this baby Amen. cry. And the joy of heaven filled my soul. Amen. My sins were gone. Yeah. I knew when the work was done. Yes. It wasn't a question of, um, you know, at times you will make many resolutions. Those of us who are the, the young people perhaps may be used to this in the college or wherever you are, I will not do this again, I will not do that again. Before you know it, you've even done past what you say you will not do again. But this time around, it's not the question of, I don't want to do. It's a question of the desire was gone. Amen. And from that time onward, I can tell you that that time of love is still current. Amen. The time of my love. When he took over from there on, God did not stop. You know when God starts? If you will allow him to start, it will not stop. It's from one thing to another. One level to another. One level to another. I didn't need to apply for a job at all. As we finish that trade center program as a plumber, we have people coming into the trade center to recruit plumbers, bricklayers, carpenters, electricians, many people like that, artisans, we call them. And they presented seven of us to be interviewed for one plumber at one industry in Lagos. And at the end of that interview, they called all the seven of us back inside. This is the end of the interview for the plumbing department. We are sorry. We have interviewed all of you. We have only taken one person that we need now. So we want all of you to leave. But um, we want Mr. You can imagine, imagine a, a, this. I, I wasn't like this that time. Maybe now some people see me, they say, you are not a man. <laughs> and perhaps I don't know what they mean, but again, I have an idea. Uh, but that time, when they say, Mr. Isaac Adigo, now we wait behind, and I, which, which Mr. Yeah. <laughs> Is it my dad or somebody they're talking about? So I've now become Mr. <laughs> see what the Lord can do? Yes. I didn't apply for any job. Yes. That's how I got my job. And it's from one job to another, from one job to another, from one job to another. I, I, I love the gospel. Yeah. 
I thank God for the love of God extended to me. So you can now imagine when I tell people my testimony of what the Lord has done in my life in terms of what he did. He has somebody taken, wallowing in blood and cleansed and now clothed and now decked and now enjoying the blessings of God. I can identify myself with this. The love of God. How measureless. How boundless. It is real. It is true. Yeah. When that foundation called the love of God is embedded in the heart, you know what follows? It's the remainder of that chapter that we read together. We don't need to be struggling with that. We don't need to be struggling with from verse 4, from verse 4 to verse 13. You don't need to be struggling at all. Once that foundation is laid, the true love of God in the heart is laid then every other thing we follow with, by the grace of God, then that love will, not, will, suffer, will, will, will suffer long, that love will be kind, will not envy, will not pour up, will not behave itself unseemly, will not be seeking only his or our own, not easily provoked, you will not be thinking of evil. All this you want to do, you cannot do on your own. But when the foundation of the love of God is laid in your heart, God will help us to do all this. Yes. And I'm wondering whether we have people who are present here who really want to enjoy that love of God. Let me close with um, one short story I read about a British man that I understood um, changed his citizenship and he became an American and he went to Cuba and he was arrested as a spy. He was tried and he was condemned to die by execution. The British and the American government, they couldn't help to free this man. And then came the day of the execution. The day of the execution came, and you know what the British and the American government decided, what, what they decided to do? They decided that this man was not given a fair trial, and this man was not be killed. So they decided that the British flag, the Union, uh, the Union Jack, immediately that man was ready for execution. They have arranged one person with the British flag, the Union Jack, to run immediately, go and cover that man with that flag. And then the American government, with their own um, US flag, the Star Spangled Banner, they quickly make somebody to run, cover that man with the American flag. And then they call out, fire on those flags if you dare. And they know what that means. They know that there are now two powerful governments covering that man and to now be executing with the flag on would be a terrible thing. And what did they do eventually? This man was saved. This man was freed. And this man was eventually released. And that goes with that verse of the scripture in Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 4, that says that he brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me was love. The banner of God over us, over me, over you. Let that enemy dare. Do you want to come under that banner? of God's love, it is available for you. It is available for me. You are invited to come forward as we sing in 608. Come forward, ladies on this side, men on this side, love of God, I want you to please be revealed in my heart. Brethren, let us
our heavenly father we thank you for your love you loved us before we love you lord you were crucified you gave your life for us lord lord we thank you your love is still today working you still love us lord come and bless these altars. Amen. Touch every heart. Amen. Save souls. Amen. Sanctify. Amen. Baptize with the Holy Amen. Ghost and fire. Amen. Heal the sick. Amen. Provide, Lord. Amen. Lord, we thank you. Yes, In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.